Good evening, and welcome to the September 11, 2007 River Falls City Council meeting. I came here in 1954 and then the buildings and Main Street still looked like the original buildings had looked. And then in the 50s and especially early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, River Falls got the idea they had to get modern. And then these buildings were covered up what they thought was to be a modern way. It didn't look very good and I told them no, but they, they thought they knew better. And now we have to painfully take off what they had put on. That's what I attribute to the 60s. To the 60s, we also can contribute the, that we lost the railway station, you know. That was when... Um, Kennedy came to town. We are not picking a governor, or a congressman, or a senator. We are picking the next president of the United States. We are picking the leader of the free world. We are picking the commander in chief. We are picking the man who will decide whether the United States shall go to the summit or not. What shall be the level of our armament? And it is on that basis that I campaign here in this state of Wisconsin. And I can assure you that if I'm successful here, I shall go to Los Angeles in hopes of being nominated. In about four hours, we had gone from President Kennedy in Dallas alive to back in Washington dead and a new president in his place. There is no more news here tonight and really no more to say except that what has happened today has been just too much, too ugly, and too fast. Uh, people uh, heated uh, their house with coal and, and, and wood, and they had ashes. And how, where do you put the ashes? 
you can have, you can use it in the garden to a limited extent, but you have too much ashes if you heat your house. See, we don't know these things anymore. <laughs> it's interesting to me that Veterans Park now slants back down again to the river. That's what it was in the beginning. There was no park. It was just a break in, you know, in Main Street, it's Elm Street, and it went rather steeply down to the river, I was told. And then people wanted it built up. So they were asked in winter time to put their ashes there. Not to put it on the street so they couldn't use the sleighs, but to put it in, and then they called it Ash Park. Mm -hmm. And when I came to town, it was called Main Street Park. And there was a water bubbler there, and there were flowers uh, planted around the water bubbler. And that was right on the street. And it remained Main Street Park until uh, young people, and also especially parents, would call it Bums Park. Which, why? Because young, young, our youngsters, our teenagers, would hang around there. You know, they were there and they would generally, I don't think they really misbehaved, but then I might have a different measure than other people. It, they didn't misbehave so much, but people thought, and there was a potential of misbehavior. So, uh, so that, that wasn't good, Bums Park. And I never liked Bums Park because these were our children. And so I always said to people, don't call it Bums Park. I can call it Ash Park, call it Main Street Park, but don't bump. And then Ed, my husband, said, yeah, and there are the flag hangs to, uh, to honor our veterans. But it should be Veterans Park and not Bums Park. And from then on, they called it Veterans Park. Those people that understood that were, they were really doing a disservice to that little piece of land that also honored our soldiers. Very briefly about the piece, I don't like to say too much about the artwork because I like people to find their own meanings in the artwork. Uh, one thing I like about work that's somewhat abstract is that um, 10 different people will have 10 different observations, 10 different interpretations. Um, not everyone will like the artwork, but uh, in my experience, public artwork should be um, a point of dialogue. It should get people talking. It should get people wondering what other people see in it or not see in it or whatever. The Rotary decided to redo a Veterans Park and they really spearheaded the project and had a landscape designer design the plan and in that plan um, they've always pictured a piece of art, a sculpture of some sort. And there was a committee put together and they picked people from the park board uh, people that represented the city of River Falls, um, people who re represented artists, because they wanted a broad opinion and a broad base of thoughts and ideas. We got 17 requests for proposals. And, and it was quite a diverse group. It was local artists. Uh, we had people from California, Arizona, uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin. And we had a criteria that we printed up that it had to have you know, it had to have something to do with the river. It also had to be, um, you know, tied into to something to do with, you know, the historic nature of River Falls, kind of looking at it as, you know, the, the big picture of what we really wanted it to do. And we took the 17 pieces, and each 17 artists had to a, had a write up um, what their thoughts were behind it. And they actually had a sketch, a drawing. Um, some of it did it to scale. and showed us what the art would look like. When they initially were redesigning the park, they, the idea for having a sculpture there was there from the, from the very beginning. But the uh, initial uh, funding problems kind of um, put that on, a, on the back burner for a while. And then when the park was completed and remodeled, it was time to you know, think about doing a sculpture.
project again and I got involved with the committee that was formed to research how to, how to bring a sculpture to a community. It's something nobody had ever done before in this community. We looked at the 17 pieces and we decided that we needed to have a criteria. So we basically built a ballot. You know, appearance, how it looked to our mission statement, you know, the criteria that we were using. And we all rated it on a scale, um, five being the best, you know, zero being the least. And we actually just all balloted ourselves. And there's basically seven of us on the committee. We took those, the ballots and we picked out the top four. Then we discussed what we liked about all of those. And, we, and it was real interesting because you had all these people and none of us all picked the, the top one and none of us all picked the, the least one. It was uh, real diverse. And we had things, all sorts of art in there. They were all fantastic. They probably all would have worked. Um, when we originally started with Richard, um, it, it, it tilted a little further to one side and some committee members really felt strongly that it should be more upright. And so we worked through that process ourselves and we worked with the artists to bring it into more into scale. Um, we did do some changes with some of the colors. Um, there was controversy if it should be brightly colored or if it should be all one color. Or, um, and what we generally agreed at, we just kept voting and discussing and voting and discussing, and it was pretty much a democratic process. We didn't tell the sculptors we want to have, you know, a, a tree or anything specific, but we did want the sculpture to speak to the community's connection to the Kinnick River. This is the first piece of public art that the city has really done. Um, there's some art at the university. Um, where you'd expect it. Um, there's some art at the library. Um, and this is probably the first piece of abstract art and maybe because it's that first piece and people don't know what to expect. But I always tell people when they talk about what they don't like about it. I've had people say, well, that, that um, huge steel tree, you know, and, and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see it when I see that. And I also explain to them that it's the first piece of public art and I hope it's first of many. Is it okay to put a statue in Veterans Park? I think sometimes uh, we make too much that we have to be so uh, honored and uh, we have to, to it, it can only be Veterans Park and can only have certain statues in there. But life is life. I experience the people from the First World War and the Second World War, especially the First World War, who had head injuries and so on, who were really a bit out of it. And the um, people were much more tolerant. And to me, that is a wonderful memory, how tolerant people can be and should be to people who are a little bit different. And different sometimes because through our fault, you see. So, and, and we haven't been confronted with that. I think we hide them away. Because when I first came here, few handicaps could be seen. They were hidden away. And then we made the effort that to, for handicaps to come out. That's what I like about this town. I always felt that here you could really be who you want to be. Not quite. Mr. Catfish uh, suggested we talk about the inclusive community signs on the north end of town. And uh, Mr. Catfish's objections, as I remember them, were that 
the wording of the sign on the bottom, which is the city sign, which says, Welcome, we are building an inclusive community. Uh, Mr. Kaffish objected to when compared to the wording of the sign on top, which is the University of Wisconsin's sign, which says, Welcome, a warm welcome to our inclusive campus. And I think Mr. Kaffish's objection had to do with what he thought was perhaps an interpretation of building a, a, uh, an inclusive community uh, suggesting that we have uh, bigots in our city. Uh, for the people who really don't know why the signs are there in the first place, over three years ago uh, on the north end of our city in the Perkins uh, restaurant scrawled on a bathroom wall was some graffiti which said uh, explicitly that with a threat that uh, there would be a killing of uh, black students on campus and a specific date was mentioned I think it was April 30 doesn't matter uh, that caused considerable stir in the community and on campus It came to my attention that there was a program sponsored by the National League of Cities and the Coalition for Building uh, Inclusive Communities, a possibility of the city of River Falls becoming or being designated as an inclusive community. And what we had to do to get that done would be to have the city council okay a resolution stating that we are in fact an inclusive community and we believe in inclusion and we think that's the best way to go and the City Council did that I think it was February 27 and uh, then I forwarded a copy of that resolution to the National League of Cities and uh, they then sent us a free sign which is the one that's in question on the bottom of the two set sign out there on the edge of the Kinney Connect. What my contention is is this, that we are building an inclusive community means we are working toward it. I don't think we have reached perfection yet. Uh, I, I realize that the wording is subject to some interpretation. I've had calls on it. I've had calls saying, well, what does inclusive mean? And uh, what does it mean we're building one? And to me, the word building is a positive word. Uh, building is positive when used in conjunction with building a house, let's say, uh, or building a coalition, or building a consensus. And I think to change the wording of it is a mistake. In addition to that, there's a broader definition of inclusion which is meant by the sign. Of course it means we are welcoming and inclus in including all races and colors and creeds, but beyond that, it says, we want to include everybody in city government. We would like to include more and more people to take their places on city boards. We would like to have more and more people indicate what it is they want, because I think an inclusive city is a better working city. In conclusion, let me say, I, I just don't agree that it would be a good idea for us to change the wording of that of that sign. I, I think there are 178 cities now that have that sign on their edge, ranging all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, to Selma, Alabama, to Winona, Minnesota, to Northfield, Minnesota. There's only one other in the state of Wisconsin, that, and that's Manitowoc. And in my opinion, that sign and our intent and our actually practicing that intent makes us a forward-looking and progressive city. That's all I have to say on it. 
Well, being that this was my item on the agenda, I appreciate your dialogue, and I would agree 100% with what you said, is that the City Council adopted that we are going to put a sign up that says we are an inclusive community. You just stated that, and that's exactly what we did. And you misread what the one at the university says also, and that is that the UW River Falls extends a warm welcome to all. Visit our inclusive campus. Now that doesn't say that they're building an inclusive campus. They have a warm welcome to all to visit their inclusive campus. All I'm saying is welcome. We are building an inclusive community. It right by that other sign does not say the same thing that the other sign does. Why can't we maybe pay for a sign and not get a free one? and maybe put in there something that, that mirrors what the university has to say, that being that we want you to visit our inclusive campus. All are welcome. Why can't we say that for the city of River Falls instead of having to put the word building in there, which means we're way down here, guys, and we're just starting to build this thing up. That's not what the city of River Falls is. I have lived here for over 50 years, and you can pick out your, I can tell you about a cross that burned up in front of South Hall back in 1962. Things, that, things happen in communities. That does not mean that the community is a bad community. We are an inclusive community. All you have to do is look around and see the different people that are here, particularly the people that are here that work for the university and the students and so forth. And I believe that we are an inclusive community and I believe it's not fair to the citizens of this community to indicate that they're not quite inclusive. What it is is that we're gonna build one. So I would move that that sign be changed and if we can't get a free one that we pay for it that says that we are an inclusive community. Uh, the general populace has never really experienced a real war. We were always far removed as we are now and we don't have to concern ourselves with it. It's rather a tragic situation to me because I have experienced war and I know how terrible it is it can be and how it can also really change people and, and make people act differently than they would ordinarily. We honor our veterans enough, I think. And I think the nicest thing we do is when, we, when a veteran died and we uh, put the uh, flag down to half-mast. That, that is, the, I think, the nicest thing we can do. Because everyone who drives by knows, even if they don't know the name of the, the person, they know somebody who has served our country has passed away. And why should we or should we not put a statue there that some people might not like? Is it colorful? It is very colorful. Oh, well, that is the new thing and we have to accept this and I think our veterans would accept it. <laughs> because many of them have been out of the country and have seen things that we have not. And therefore they think a little bit differently. This piece was really made for this site. I wouldn't feel comfortable just picking this piece up, transporting it elsewhere, and putting it in um, a different park or a different setting. You know, again, the, the colors were chosen because of these stone walls. Uh, the imagery was chosen because of the outdoors, the rivers, the forests of this area of uh, River Falls. Um, it, it wouldn't seem right for me to put this piece elsewhere, and I think the, the best public art always has its site in, in mind. In my hometown, there is on one street a bench, and on this bench sits a man and reads the newspaper, and his wife stands behind him and looks over his shoulder. That's a statue, and I find these things delightful. <laughs> I look, for instance, at our planter here. That is really so uninteresting. 
why not make our life more colorful by putting all kinds of interesting things around? Well, you know, I, I think public art is important because it, you know, it takes down that maybe barrier that might exist if, if, if art is always confined within the museum walls and it, uh, there's a certain you know, elitism to that maybe and, and public art being right out in, in public view, it's, it's people are able to interact with it without, with, without making a, that, that special effort that they might be maybe intimidated into making it by going to a museum and, and seeing something. So public art, whether it be a sculpture or a mural or you know, anything like that, being right out there, that's why I think it's important. Uh, yeah, I think it's very important as an artist who does work in public to realize that not everyone is going to like everything. And I really don't think of deflecting criticism. In fact, in an odd way, I actually welcome criticism. I feel like I learn from it as an artist, and I, I'm not naive enough to think that everyone's going to like everything any artist does. Uh, I certainly think of other artists, um, Picasso for example, who did what is probably the signature piece in the city of Chicago, a large head of a woman. And when that piece was first proposed, I think in the 1960s, it was met with a lot of criticism and a lot of ridicule and very, very soon thereafter became uh, the veritable symbol of the city of Chicago and people see that head and they immediately think Chicago and Chicagoans warmed up to the fact that their city was um, represented by this um, fabulous sculpture so um, not that I'm comparing myself at all to Picasso but that there's certainly a history of um, criticism and of people embracing art after a while and um, Beyond that, again, I go back to the fact that 10 people will have 10 very different reactions to a piece of work that is somewhat abstract. The important, the most important job of public art is to create a dialogue. A dialogue with the viewer and the piece of artwork within the viewer's mind, and then a, a, a separate dialogue with viewers themselves who discuss what they see in a piece of art, what they don't see in a piece of art, um, what the art means to them or doesn't mean to them. I think we all learn from these experiences of being forced to think about something. And I think the, one of the jobs of public art, if not the most important job, is to make people think about something. Uh, so that's why, in a way, I do embrace criticism and I do learn from what people say and try to incorporate what I learn into the next piece. Just you know. I hate to play devil's advocate, but uh, but building a community does um, c connote that we will eventually achieve that that goal, and that the sign should eventually change once we've reached that goal. So it, there there is a good point that's being being mentioned here, and I I don't know if you know we we do reach a date where we decide we do take down that sign. And yes, we are now an inclusive community. So so there is kind of a connotation there with that word building I guess yeah right and I mean mm -hmm. if you're inclusive you're inclusive that means you accept all people and I think the city of River Falls does what this is saying is that we're trying to we're not trying to we are we have been and we will continue to be and why should we indicate that we've got people in this town that are creeps that's exactly what this is saying, and I don't think we should say that. Well, I, I, I can't see how the 
interpretation of that sign says that uh, we have people in town who are creeps. I guess it all depends well, on how you interpret. Or bigots either. Yeah. Uh, it, it uh, as I said before, the uh, to build one is to work on it, and uh, I think that is a much more honest statement of the position that we should be in. And then why why isn't the university building one? It's not supposed to mean that they have achieved an inclusive campus, but rather that that was their intent to get there. They're extending a warm welcome to all. I understand that. And what in the world is better than that? And then it says visit our, should it say visit our attempt to become an inclusive campus? That's basically what we're saying here. And I think it's ludicrous that we say that. Mr. Mayor, so what I'm hearing you say is that this is a slogan that comes from that organization. It, it does. That's not is. what we voted on, no. It's yeah. not what we voted on. We yes, voted it is, Mr. On that we are. I just, you just read it there, and no, you no. said it is that. I did not read off well, the uh, you, resolution. You said that the, the council voted on uh, to be to get a sign that said we are an inclusive community, and that's exactly no, I, what I you did said. Not say that. You did too. No, I did just now. I think the resolution actually was for partnership for working toward exactly inclusive communities. That's what we passed. Um, I guess one question I would have is, how come we only let the people coming in from the north know about it? If they're so good. <laughs> well, well, the from others the south have to come in from the east. Uh, the mural on the side of the Ben Franklin was done um, for the sesquicentennial or the 150th birthday of River Falls. At, I think, as I recall, there was a committee that was formed and they um, were, uh, were interested in mural. Actually, the funny thing about it was that I had sp started painting murals, oh, you know, 15 years previous to that, um, maybe a little bit more than that, and, I, and uh, I had always had my eye on that wall. As, as something I wanted to do someday, and then that opportunity came along. That was in 1997 now, so that's almost 10 years ago. Um, and we wanted to celebrate the, the river, the connection the city had to the river, so I thought it being the his, history thing, that dividing it into panels of the, the, the same, it's kind of the same location on the river and three different time periods at when the, when the Town was settled, and first settled, then when the, the it was dammed up and the river scape changed, and a more recent one where it actually in my memory, and then the big trout on it, of course, to to uh, uh, commemorate the uh, or honor the trout that are that are famous, the river is famous for. And then I, uh, along the bottom of the mural, I decided to put these silhouette figures just to kind of make it a more of a human connection and and to uh, have human scale figures there. And without getting into the detail of trying to do people's portraits, I thought silhouette figures would be a nice uh, way to, to accomplish that. You could you try to, you know, get some some different g genders and young and old and different walks of life. And uh, that that that's actually where the the bit of controversy came into the mural when I was doing those figures, and it was surprised took me totally by surprise. And some people, for some reason, thought that I was painting black people on the wall and you know in their small mindedness couldn't understand why I would do that and I had to carefully explain that they were not necessarily black or white or red or green or whatever they were silhouettes of people and uh, it was funny that I didn't expect to have any anything like that happen and actually the uh, the committee at the time they even suggested maybe we should try to do something about that. I thought, you know, just let it sit and, you know, you're always going to run into something, somebody that doesn't like something about something that's in public art. And I, I think that's really true. I, no matter what kind of art you are doing in terms of public art, there's always going to be someone that's not going to be totally liking it. Richard, we found Richard's piece to be um, colorful, and provocative and unique enough that it, when you look at the piece, you, everybody sees something different. 
and that's kind of what we were looking for. Um, you know, my personal opinion was that we need to have a piece of art that isn't, you don't look at it and, and know exactly what it is. You want to look at it and make people think. And, and that, that piece really worked that well. It was, it was done very well. Aesthetically, I like it. Um, the colors are bright, yet um, they're not too bright. I think it'll add a lot of color. We didn't want another uh, piece of limestone in that park because we fe felt it would get lost. It might be appropriate there by some opinions, but you know, I don't want it to be a piece of sculpture that just blends in. I really wanted it to be a piece of sculpture that brings people to the park to check it out. When we got the model from Richard and displayed it at the library, um, I was, you know, I, I was kind of surprised again at how quickly the uh, the response came in from from a, from the negative side of, of the view of it, not not understanding or not liking it, not uh, you know seeing well how how it would fit into our community. Um, but at the same time, I'm here. I I reading the negative comments or hearing the negative comments, I, I'm getting the same from the other side too as well. People are coming up and saying, we're so glad you're doing this project. Thanks for all the work you're doing on this project. We're you know, excited to have something like this happening in River Falls. And I really think that it, it's it's gonna be something that that grows. I think the community is gonna get behind it, I really do. I, even though we won't, it won't be 100%, there'll always be those few that they're not going to like it. They're not going to. They'll go to a museum and not like something in the museum. Well, all of my pieces are somewhat inspired by music and by poetry. Um, I play the saxophone and I enjoy music a lot, both classical and jazz. So I'd, I'd like to feel that all my pieces have the rhythm and syncopation and harmony of various types of music within them. And hope people see that. And then poetry. I enjoy poetry very much, also. And, it, of course, has a rhythmic quality, so I, I, I hope my pieces absorb some of the, the rhythm and harmony of music and poetry. But beyond that, of course, the people from the committee wanted a piece that somewhat reflected the proximity to the rivers and the forests and just the outdoor nature of um, River Falls. So I tried to incorporate um, a little imagery of, of the forest, of trees, of leaves, and of fish and of water moving, not too specifically and not too literally because I don't like to be too literal in my artwork. I like to search for things a bit. And the piece itself might have the composition of a tree, um, but those were the very basic um, principles underlying the piece. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of waiting till I, till I see it to see what I actually feel about it, but looking at the at the model, there I see tree. I see the, it, the tree is the most obvious thing that you see when you see it. Uh, but there is also uh, what with the blue and the cut shapes, um, a reference to water, a reference to um, the sun probably or the moon maybe, or um, I don't know if there's a yeah, there's a fish shape in there as well. I believe yeah. It'll be fun to see what people come up with and, and see what they see. I'm in the mood for love. Simply because you're near me. Funny but when you're near me. I'm in the mood for love.
the piece itself is sparked a little more controversy than we expected. Um, when I look at it, I don't look at it as being controversial at all. I don't look at it being anything that's um, offensive. Um, and I guess I look at art a little differently. I, I realize that public art, the role of public art to me is to, ed, to educate, to spur conversation, um, to, to elevate. And I think art in a community, to have art added to the community is, says something about the community you live in. I'm disturbed by people being so black and white because it's not an issue that you can be black and I, I just don't think art should be black and white. It's like grading art in, in high school. How can you give somebody, you know, if they don't show up for class, I understand that, but art to be graded is really hard for me because it's, it's, it's more than just a thing. It should be spurring conversation. It should be bringing people to the park to look at it. it and I, when I look at that piece, it does all those things. at the uh, dedication today with um, a red beret and the first thing she said when she came up to me was I came here with an open mind and I thought that's great I should use you as the poster child of um, what I wish any viewer of any public art mine or any piece of artwork anywhere should have we should all approach a piece of artwork with an open mind